Well, hello again, everybody. I'm the Colonel Bob Sheridan. We're welcoming you back to this uh, terrific main event of the evening featuring O'Neill Bell and Jean-Marc Mombeck for the WBC and WBA World Cruiserweight Championship. Joining with me now is a great French broadcaster and boxing historian. He's Jean-Philippe Lustique. And Jean-Philippe, before we get the festivities underway, I want to welcome you, and then we'll pick up the action here, uh, what's going on here in the uh, auditorium. Thank you very much uh, to welcome me. I'm so happy to be here and share this great boxing evening, probably the most important for the French fans since uh, the last uh, Chozo against McCallum 11 years ago. It's a huge event for all the fans, for all the media, and Jean-Marc will be supported by four, and uh, how many, 4,500 people. It's so that since one month here and tonight it's, the live gate is huge over at 500,000 euro it's very important and all the pressure is on Jean-Marc is probably his fight of the life tonight for him he can't lose he's 35 years old he lose the first fight tonight it's a rematch in front of his fans in front of the biggest audience for him all right we're going to go to the uh, national anthem of uh, Massimino Babecchio who is the Italian referee, so they're doing the Italian anthem. We'll listen. The Italian anthem will have the United States anthem. And of course, because of World Cup Saga, the crowd is not happy to hear the Italian anthem. It's too bad. I like the American national anthem. And now the American anthem, and you can expect to hear boos for that. Du champion du monde, Onel Bale. Voici l'hymne jamaïcain. Ah, they're doing the Jamaican anthem for O'Neill Bell. Anthem since the famed Jamaican bobsled <laughs> team. <laughs> I'll yeah, tell you one years thing. ago, right at the Olympics. Well, have you seen the, color, the difference between the two faces? 
Jean-Marc is, is extremely tense. He is, but he's well conditioned this time, uh, Jean-Philippe. That's the words of Jean-Philippe Lustique, who is joining us for this fight to help us with the uh, translation. And perhaps you can tell us what they're... We we're taking a look now at the tail of the tape, and it can tell us a, a few things that uh, O'Neill Bell is slightly taller, he's slightly heavier, he's two years younger, and he's giving away an inch, or rather he has, a, as a matter of fact, uh, about an inch advantage in reach over Jean-Marc Mormec. So there's not a heck of a lot between these two guys in age, height, reach, or weight for that matter. There's not a lot between them. The introduction is in French by the French ring Alonso for the first time. Alexandre Devoise, he introduced the records, okay? And also, we have all the information concerning O'Neill Bell, yeah. based in Atlanta. O'Neill Bell uh, just announced him 26 1 and 1, 24 knockouts from Atlanta, Georgia, by way of Montego Bay in Jamaica. And Supernova is a cool, calm boxer, very relaxing. He was in the lobby in the hotel last night until one in the morning. He slept just a few hours per night. He's so cool and so calm. There's a Richie Giacchetti there with uh, Jean-Marc Mormec. Richie, of course, uh, gained his fame for the great job he did with Larry Holmes. Richie told me that, you know, if Jean-Marc has learned anything, it's to work his jab, work his way in, a jab, 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 throw the right hand, and if he executes this, Richie's quite confident that the condition, and you take a look at the washboard stomach, well, now we're over in the shot of O'Neill Bell, but Jean-Marc Mormec has got the washboard stomach. Now, the referee, Massimino Borvecchio, uh, calls him in. This fight is sanctioned by the WBC and WBA. It's a rematch of a tremendous fight that took place. The WBC supervisors, co-supervisors, Edmund Lipinski from Russia and Hussein Rishi from Tunisia. Bob Rogers from Belgium is the WBC representative for WBC President Jose Suleiman. The judges, Hubert Min from the United States, Hawaii, a terrific judge. Guido Cavaliere, familiar with his work, another WBC judge from Italy, and Michael Hook from Sweden, a WBA judge. So those are the three judges. Again, the referee, Massimino Bervecchio from Italy, is the third man in the ring, and we're just about set to go. As you know, O'Neill Bell, a very, very strong puncher, dangerous with the right hand, and we'll see how the pace will go. And we know that Mormec is in probably the best condition of his life. Exactly. He needs to be in the best condition because this is the fight of his life. The three first minutes for me will be crucial. Don't forget, 14 months ago, he lose by knockout. Okay, in the dark green with the gold trim on his trunks is O'Neill Bell. The Colonel Bob Sheridan here with Jean-Philippe Lustique. You're watching King Vision around the world for this, the WBA and WBC rematch of the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. That's a 200-pound division. O'Neill Bell to the right of your screen, leads off with the right hand to Jean-Marc Mormec. Now, Mormec likes to fight from the outside, but Richie Giacchetti has uh, tried to instruct him to give a lot of movement and jab on his way in. He doesn't seem to be jabbing his way in, but he's giving a lot of head movement. This is a guy that can bang himself. Nice uppercut on the inside as he catches Bell. Bell trying to tee off and try to catch him early. A little bit of a chess match in the early oh, going. Counter punch, beautiful right hand. A short one just at the end of Bell. Bell was hurt. We know that. We'll see. He's very well conditioned. He got nailed with a pretty good right hand shot there by Jean-Marc Mormec. But this is uh, some of the coaching and training that Richie has given Mormec, and it looks like he's able to execute it. He's not doing the jabbing. Oh, that's the yes. jab. Beautiful. That's the stiff jab. Very, very stiff jab. Really good shot. Is O'Neill Bell trying to come back. So Mormec has started out with some good shots, the heaviest blows. Absolutely. He's cool, Cal. And he well prepared, and Richie Jacketti during five weeks in Oban, south of France, has prepared him very well. He looked excellent during the first two minutes. And there's another big left hand by Jean-Marc. This isn't the way the first fight went. It was Bell who was landing the big thunder shot. Big body shot. Bell comes back with a straight right hand. But Mormec is in condition and holds up well to it. He's waltzing in without throwing the jab, and I know that isn't what Richie wants. Richie Giacchetti, I continue to allude to because he is the new trainer of Mormec. But Mormec's body's in terrific shape. He lets the right hand whistle past the chin of O'Neill Bell, and he had the idea in the face of Bell that he knows that he's in for work here in the backyard of Jean-Marc Mormec. 
the Colonel Bob Sheridan here with Jean-Philippe Lustique. We're in France for this fight, a place called La Vallée, France, La Bois. Palais de Sports, Marcel Sheridan as O'Neill Bell blasts to the body. Le Valois next to Paris are just two miles in North of Paris for the biggest in boxing event since 11 years now. Oh, an uppercut, strong right hand. Mohamed with a big shot. We're in the closing seconds now of round number one. It's been a good one. So the bell ends the first round. I gotta put that one in my book for more mech. I think he landed more punches and I think that he landed heavier punches. Exactly. It's an excellent start from Jean-Marc Mohamed. We were a little bit worried at the beginning, but now the departure is excellent. Yeah. Let's listen into the corner. Open the nice. Real good. But you gotta keep jabbing. Keep jabbing. As you take a look at the replay. You understand? This is the right. You got a jab, John. Work off the jab. Straight down the middle. Boom, boom, boom. Combinations. Doing well. Oh, there's the big right hand there. Out the Joe. Oh, there's a big shot with that right hand. And again, you heard Richard Jagetti say you got a jab. Good. Two. This is scheduled for 12. The WBC and WBA Cruiserweight Championship of the World. <laughs> Round number two. Look at more Mech trying to deliver shots from the inside. That's where Richie wants him to fight, and he's doing the job. He executed the perfect plan. The perfect plan. Walk to the body, jab and move the head, the head and two punches. In the, meantime, the in the meantime, Bell goes downstairs. He delivers a light blow to the right side of the body. No effect on Mormek. He's got things going pretty much his way as Mormek so far. Mormek is fighting much more uh, Jean-Philippe on the inside. He's doing a much better job on the inside than he did in the first fight. Absolutely, Colonel. He watched the tapes with Richie. He worked a lot on television. And minutes after minutes, they were the study the first fight. Now he, he has realized the mistakes he has made, and he doesn't want to do the same thing for the rematch. And remember, in the first fight, in my score sheet, and at least a couple of other uh, judges, Tommy Kazmarek is a great judge. He had Mormek winning, you know, most of the early rounds. So Mormek is doing about the same thing in this fight. The thing he's got to be concerned about, and, and one thing that the French fans will be concerned about, oh, the right hand flash to the left side of the jaw of Bell, but it oh, doesn't again. Him. The uppercut catches him with the right hand. Bell tries to battle back as best he can. Bell is very flat-footed, standing in front of Momek as he crunches the right hand. He the uppercut. again. The uppercut. He nails him again. And finally, the referee says, don't push him off like that. If you want to get him off, you got to slide down, grab him, walk him off, but you, I don't want you pushing him like that. And here's O'Neal Bell trying to pick up some momentum here, but he's waiting on the ropes for this guy. And Mormek has got, as you said, uh, Jean-Philippe, he's got the perfect fight plan going his way. Yeah, exactly. And we know that Mormek is a, such a good sprinter. He has sometimes a problem with his stamina. We will see. But for the moment, it's perfect. He looks excellent. And he needs to be focused because sometimes he loses concentration. Now, there he is landing the right hand, but he takes the right hand right back from Bell. But it's Mormek. Almost with his with his thumbs out and his hands uh, with his palms up, but landing good body shots and trying to land another uppercut in there. Bell comes back and crashes him. And again, referee Massimi, Massimo Bovecchio says something to O'Neill Bell. The crowd in attendance doesn't like whatever it was that O'Neill Bell was accused of doing. I couldn't really tell you. There's some borderline low blows right there, but that wasn't the problem. But uh, Mormek looks to the referee for help every once in a while. Here we go now. It's a Pierce yeah. Sixer yeah. as they continue the battle. O'Neal Bell lands a crushing right hand. Big shots. Look at these shots. Whoa, the action as the bell ends round three. From Marcel Sardin, Palace of Sports, and Lavoie.
in France. I'm the Colonel Bob Sheridan. Working with me is uh, the French commentator Jean-Philippe uh, Lustig. Our principal's in there for the WBC and WBA Cruiserweight Championship in green. With his back here, Bell who just cracked him with an uppercut. Jean-Marc Mormec in the black trunks. Leaning in front of him with his head down is not a good idea. He holds his gloves high, and he got away with it that time. But Bell will landing some good body shots here now. As the left hook, as I say that by Jean uh, oh, Mormec. Oh, a shot there. No, it's not beaten. One more time now. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Time up. Yeah, yeah low blow. It's a real low blow. And build the belt now. And he needs a minimum of 20 seconds to recover. Well, he, he can get as much as five minutes and he should take yeah. it all. Sure. Remember there was a low blow in the first fight. Yeah. As you take a look at it, you see a real good shot landed by Mormack and then the right hand south of the border, right on top of the cup. And Mormack by right now should take all the time he wants. And the corner is telling him to stay down. And I take his time. Exactly. And I hope that he's smart enough to take his time this exactly. time. Breathe slowly. Take your time. Have you seen Bell during the replay? As you watch the big screen to see his low blow. Sometimes the critics say that only Bell is a dirty fighter. He will have a perfect example. I hope he's not do it again tonight because the fight is great and we need a clear fight. More Mick had made a, a mistake by not taking more time. It seems like uh, Massimo Robecchio kind of forced him, and by right, by the rules of the WBC and WBA, you've got a full five minutes after a low blow. But he didn't take the full five. He took probably a minute and a half. But anyway, it doesn't seem to affect him right at this stage because they're right back at it. Massimo Robecchio... Got him back in action, certainly before Al Banani and uh, Richard Giacchetti wanted him to get back in action. So they continue to blast away at each other. Mormick landed a big shot, and right back comes O'Neal Bell. Bell ducks underneath him. Tell you, Mormick is exposing his jaw. He has his hands up by, by his cheeks, but he bends over right in front of Bell, and Bell is cracking him with those uppercuts. You're right, Colonel. His defense is weak. That's a problem, you know? He took too many uppercuts now from Bell, and Bell is extremely active and dangerous. Even when he seems hurt, he's still dangerous. He's always dangerous, Bell. He's still active, he's still controlling, even if sometimes he looks tired. Well, he's uh, he's got very strong punches, but I'll tell you this, the body punches are more mech uh, landing, too. Bell having his best round of the fight, though, here, in spite of the fact that he had one of the, has another low blow, and now Massimo Bovecchio says, no, a low blow, and he waves. I don't believe he took a point away because he didn't go to the judges, but that's a second warning now. Next time, he takes a point away. Uppercut by Mormec. Misses the wild left hand. Right hand, he chops and misses again. O'Neal Bell tries to battle back, and this is everything that the first fight was. We got us a beer six brawl. Mormec and O'Neal Bell battling for the again. Cruiserweight Illegal. Championship of the world. Big shot landed by Mormec. Oh, he catches up on the left. He's got an O'Neal Bell in trouble. Can he finish him off? I don't know. Bell hanging in there, but he's taking vicious, vicious shots now by Mormack. Can he drop him here in round three? What a round for Mormack. After being here with long blows, Mormack is ignited. Bell's in trouble. His legs are loose with the knees. He's getting blasted. If he doesn't answer, this fight could be stopped. Blasting body shots. All on hits and punches. Finally, Bell tries to mount some sort of offense. And the Bell ends an unbelievable third round. The WBC is going to have them score this, and we'll find out how they have it scored. I've got it 30 to 27 in favor of Mormec after three. So we'll see how the judges have it, and Jean-Philippe Lustique will be able to interpret and get that information for us. This is round four. O'Neill Bell to the right of your screen with a gold trim on his dark green trunks. Jean-Marc Mormec had Bell in a bit of trouble in the third round, but wasn't able to finish him off. And now he goes right back to the body assault. This is a terrific effort by both fighters because after the big assault by Mormec, Bell was able to amount a little bit of an attack when I thought that uh, maybe he was going to hit a big crunching right hand that time by Mormec. And that's what got it started in the last fight. Bell is in shape, uh, Jean-Philippe, yeah. because yeah. he's gobbled up some heavy blows without going down. We know that he's such a national big athlete, you know. 
He has practiced football and wrestling. He's always ready. His training was in Big Bird during six weeks. The guy is ready to defend his title tonight, for sure. Now well, there's a looping right hand again. Bell kind of just having to hang in there with this guy. Mormek is taking the instructions of his trainer, Jacchetti, and fighting more on the inside. But his bell battling back now. O'Neal looks a little bit on the awkward side, but don't forget, he's, he's very heavy-handed. Very heavy-handed. And let's see if Mormek is in trouble as Bell comes forward and blasts him with the right hand. He's trying to finish him off here. I don't think he's in that much trouble. But there he takes the uppercut. A little bit of possum off the ropes from John Mack. And now back comes John Mack Mormek. Look at this battle. Seesawing back and forth. You could ask for more than this in a prize fight. How about this? Back-to-back -back fights for titles. This one for world championship. Cutler landed a couple of two low blows in there. And look at the continuing blasting of Mormek. It's a terrific unified World Championship tonight, and the crowd is fantastic. They support all the time Jean-Marc Mormek. Everybody's so excited. This is the fight tonight. Well, it's terrific uh, that Bell uh, looks like he's totally exhausted, but then when he gets in there, he unloads shots. He's waltzing into the kill zone, and Mormek not throwing back. The pace of this fight has been very, very fast. It's going to come down to who's in the better shape. Mormek, again, I think, is winning... You know, most of the rounds, although this has been a pretty good round for Bell. There was a time when I thought that he might have been a little bit troubled. Every time you say that, right back comes Mormek. And he's unloading shots with 18 seconds to go in the fourth round. Both guys very exhausted for about 10 seconds remaining in the fourth round. Now here's Bell. I think Bell has probably won this fourth round. We're coming up to the fifth round. There's supposed to be an announcement yes. by the WBC. They're going to do it. Yes. We have almost the same scorecards. 39 for Mormek, 47 for Bell for the first judge. Second, 39, 47. Two points difference. Third, it's 39, 38. But Mormek is leading. All right, uh, the way they announced that, we'll continue with the action here now. So Mormek is leading on all the judges' scorecards. Uh, it's pretty much in line with the way I have it. So one minute's gone here in the fifth uh, round. It kind of took the steam in the in the the enthusiasm out of the crowd while they were announcing that because the round had begun so you know again it's an experience by uh, an experiment by the wbc and it slowed down what has been a sensational fight to this point and is more mech trying to battle back again after o'neill got the first minute of this fifth round and he comes with hopefully for the french people all the stamina and for the jamaicans and americans o'neill bell hanging right in there with him but he's behind in the scorecards and now he, well, he probably doesn't know it because he couldn't hear he was fighting. But his corner will know it. Bell landing some clean shots. Mormek is missing a lot of shots. And he looks almost like he's gassed as he has to take a step back. But both of these guys have put out so much. The problem is Mormek. He doesn't have any B plan. That's the problem. He just attacks two punches and he needs to go forward. Well, he's coming forward now. But a tremendous amount of exhaustion in the early going. But here he is, loading up shots right above our King Vision position here at ringside. O'Neill Bell kind of has his head to the side, playing a little bit of possum. But now he gets back to work. So the seesaw battle continues with 46 seconds to go in the fifth round. Back and forth they go. Both look tired during this round five. It's hard now. Look at them. I don't know if it's the best boxer will win tonight, for sure. The best athlete, the well-prepared, will win tonight. Well, Mormek, in spite of the fact that he appears to be landing heavier blows at this particular juncture, really looks almost out on his feet, and we're only in the fifth round of a scheduled 12-rounder. He has a history of wilting late, and again, he continues to land heavy blows. Can he drop O'Neill Bell, who again appears like he was hurt and then appeared that he was playing possum. Chopping right hand, cracks behind his left ear. And O'Neill has to muster up all he has against this guy. The bell. Here we go, round number.
the 6th, scheduled the 12th. Another thing I should point out, the air conditioning is not good in this building. It's very hot for these fighters. Between the pace of the fight, the television lights, and the pure heat of the 4,500 people that are in here, it's very hot for these fighters in there. And uh, Jean-Philippe uh, uh, Lustique will tell you that the conditioning of Mormon has been a question for all his career. Although he's mounting an offense now. Yeah, you know, Mormon now, you mean the first minute, the last minute, he looked calm and he seems to recover. That's important because we know the capacity of Bell to be at the top all the time. Even when he seems in trouble, he's still dangerous. All right, here comes Mormek. Got him up against the ropes, fighting on the inside, trying to really smother the punching efforts of O'Neill Bell. Bell letting him blast into the body and taking a lot of shots on the inside. There's one thing for sure. Mormek knows he's in a war, and he wants to do it in front of his French crowd here. O'Neill Bell now slides down the ropes and cracks him right back. Remember, Bell is the type of guy that can take you out with one punch or change this fight with one punch. Mormek is a guy that accumulates shots more. And now uh, Massimo Barovecchio says, watch hitting behind the head. It gives both of them a chance to get a little second breather here in the sixth round. The pace has been furious. The referee is from Roma. His world championship tonight is number six in his career. All right, and you see again that Mormek goes right back to blasting. You can feel the heat yourself here at ringside, so you can imagine what these fighters are going through in there. It's got to be 90 degrees here at Fahrenheit at ringside, and very, very much warmer for the fighters that are in that ring. Mormek blasts the body of Bell. Bell up against the ropes, as you see, and taking punishment. But you get the idea that he might be playing a little possum, but he better cover up. And Mormek, you see how awkward Bell looks right now? Almost gassed. And Mormek muster up enough in the last he minute him. of this round. He kisses him. He what? He kisses. He kisses. Yes. Yes. I'm I mean, so surprised, you know? Left hand shot by Bell. But Bell is fighting from, I mean, just pure exhaustion, it appears. And Mormek keeps throwing shots. He's much more busy. Bell playing a little bit of possum. But this time he gets there with a pretty good left hand. Now he fights off the ropes. Very interesting to watch what Bell is trying to do to this guy, trying to psych him up. But he's taking a lot of shots in this round. This is a big round for Mormet. 15 seconds ago in this round. And Bell just almost out of exhaustion unleashes shots. Mormet throws an uppercut. He throws it so hard. hard. And he is hurt very much so in the closing seconds of the round. But most of it, again, is exhaustion. Here we go. We're ready to go in the seventh round. And O'Neal Bell is not coming off his stool. He's out on his feet. If he doesn't get up, he just barely got up. He didn't get up off his stool. He can hardly hear the bell. So there's a lot of confusion here in France. But we're getting ready to go to the seventh round. Now it comes down to conditioning. I don't know if Mormek can recover from the beating he took in the closing seconds or if O'Neal Bell can muster up the strength because he was out on his feet for a good part of the sixth round. This is round seven. The Colonel Bob Sheridan here with Jean-Philippe Lustig. You're watching King Vision Worldwide. The WBC, WBA titles on the line, and it has been a barn burner. All kinds of pain and grimacing on the face of O'Neal Bell. But if he's got anything left, he should be assaulting this guy. Both of these guys are totally to the point of exhaustion with the extreme heat that I've tried to point out to you in this uh, ring here and the uh, Palace of Sports. It's anything but a palace for these fighters tonight. Mormek blast O'Neal Bell. But again, Mormek, when he is put out so hard for most of that last round, is still very flat-footed right now. Both of these guys are at the point of almost collapse. The last time I saw two guys this fatigued, I can never remember two guys this fatigued this early in the fight. I'm thinking way back to, to, to Ali and Joe Frazier. That's yeah, what the exhaustion looks like. Yeah, it's something similar during the Strula in Manila. Yeah, in 75. It's crazy, you know, only around seven. Look at this. O'Neal taking shots. He's back up against the ropes. How much punishment can he take? There was a time a couple of rounds ago where I thought that Massimo Barbecchio might have even stopped the fight. And is more mech that is doing the best he can to throw shots. He's landing shots, and it's just an accumulation of punches. 
But remember, at the end of the last round, he was totally exhausted. We're in the final minute of this seventh round, and Bell is the one that looks exhausted right now. It's unbelievable, that Corey. You know, he never stopped. He never stopped. Oh, yes. Two big shots bouncing the head back of a Bell. And only a Bell is totally exhausted and has to hang on. But then more Mech who looks into the eyes. You see him open his eyes, take a deep breath, and now O'Neal tries to battle back. I'm sure that Mormeck is saying to himself, what do I have to do to drop this guy? And here's O'Neal trying to get something going. The line up that right hand, face left, face back to the right. He wants to pull the trigger, but he can't. He falls forward. Look at these guys, 20 seconds to go. This is an unbelievable so many, Yeah, unbelievable run. He took too many punches, Bell, but he's still there. And it's hard for Mormeck to realize that his opponent is still just in front of him. It's oh. unbelievable, this fight. Who would have believed that Mormeck, after that last round, in the very closing seconds, that he could come back and sustain this round. But it was Bell who was outstretched on his stool. That's what reminded me so much of the, the Ali Frazier fight. All right, here we go. This is round number eight. Scheduled for 12. I don't think that these two guys can sustain it for five more rounds. But everything they've done has surprised me so far. You're watching King Vision worldwide. I know it's St. Patrick's Day in New York, and I know you must be enjoying it there and around the world with a few cocktails. But this is something <laughs> where the fighters are like a few after this one's over, especially a nice cold beer. Whoa. Oh, big blasting left hand by Moore Mac. Snaps head back of O'Neill Bell. Now Bell has more mech up against the ropes. And Bell himself, his heels like this flypaper on the bottom of glued the canvas. Very loose in the knees. But both guys are very, very fatigued. And this is a time when conditioning is a whole thing. And this is also a time where more mech's history is wilting, but he never went through a training camp like he did this time with Richie Giacchetti. Look at him, look at the, how Bell is flexible. You know, it's very strange, his attitude in the ring. Yeah, he is. I mean, he's a guy that wants to change the course of this with one big punch. Or almost hope that Mormeck punches himself out, kind of like he did in the first fight. Because Mormeck, this is very similar in the scoring to where the first Absolutely. fight was. You're right, you're right, Colonel. You're right, but the capacity to absorb punches, Bell said before the fight, I'm ready to die for the World Championship. He, demonstrates that that's the case tonight. It's unbelievable. His Mormeck staying away now, wants to draw Bell to him. What they're both doing is catching his second win. Bell's not going to chase him. He's going to take this opportunity to catch his breath as much as he can. Now he goes with a sneaky right-hand lead. Bell looks to me like his eyes are clear, and as I say that, Mormeck blasts him with a stiff jam. And Bell, almost hot-dogging, he comes forward. He's got some sort of second win. So he's dangerous. Right now, O'Neal Bell is dangerous, even though Mormeck is winning this round. This is a very interesting fight, on top of being yeah, a wonderful extremely, athletic contest. Extremely interesting, and one of the best he's away now for many years. Last year, it was the best fight of the division, for sure. Tonight, is still the, uh, the best. Both boxers are the best cruiser world in the world now for the last two years. And both of them seem to have some sort of second win right now. Look at these shots. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at that shot with 25 seconds to go. John Mark Mormeck stays away, then he comes in. Blasts O'Neill Bell, pulls away, makes Bell come to him this time, and Bell's willing to oblige, but it's Mormeck that's getting the shots up. His punches seem crisper right now. But no defense, he has low hands, you know? He's, he's dodging dangerous. his hands, yeah, yeah. it's dangerous, it's dangerous for him. And his Bell trying to catch him. The the Colonel Bob Sheridan here with Jean-Philippe Lustig, a French boxing expert and great commentator. Pour mon mec, 74-78. Pour mon mec, 74-78. Pour mon mec. This is the scorecard now after eight rounds. 78 to 74 pour mon mec. 78 to 74. And 78 to 74. Okay, so 78-74 seems to be the score. Well, I've got it 79-74. They have it a point uh, closer, but theirs is official. So the official score basically is 78-74 in favor of Mormeck at this stage. So with the four rounds to go, 
Bell desperately needs to win the ninth round. And if Mohamed can win this round, it's going to be very difficult for O'Neal Bell to win this fight without a knockout, or at least knocking him down a couple of times. That's not beyond the realm of possibility, because that's exactly what happened in the first fight. Exactly. That's why you will be in danger, Mohamed, until the end. So remember, I had it 79-74, and the consensus of the three judges is 78-74 in favor of Mohamed. So that's the open scoring for you. And both guys right back at work. Look at this. Mohamed now definitely has his second win. He looks more fresh now in the ninth round of this fight than he did in the ninth round of the last fight. Remember, in the last fight, it was that seventh round that really took it out of both of them. Exactly. But we're beyond that Much now. Much better trained tonight with Richie Jacchetti than he was 14 months ago, for sure. But Conolo, the road is still long. It's a long way to the, to the, the belt. Now, this is not over yet. Mormack doing what he did in the first fight, winning on the scorecards, but he can't get cocky because O'Neal Bell is dangerous. Now time is called a low as blow. a low blow is hit. And, of course, you hear the crowd reaction. O'Neal Bell has got five minutes, and he will, I'm sure, take every minute of the five minutes. And if he doesn't, he's crazy. As the low blow. That low blow not only was low, but it lifted up the cup, the protector. And it really, that would really be a punishing, punishing low blow. So each guy has had a low blow. He should take one his, one look now. at this, again, Massimo Boravecchio, the referee, I thought he was encouraging him to fight. O'Neal Bell should take all the time. He's got five minutes, but no, he no. doesn't. No. Doesn't even He's take. He's a fighter. He yeah. has to continue right now. It's not smart, though. It's not no. smart, Jean-Philippe. All right, here he goes. But Tom, somehow or other, it's ignited him. He seems like he's got his total win back all right, though. Maybe he just doesn't want the ebb and flow, or maybe he doesn't want to give Mormek the breather, which, you know, that's a different strategy to talk about because he thinks that Mormek is fatigued. And let's see. It's academic now because we're back in action. Both guys landing shots. O'Neal is pressing the fight more now. Jean-Marc still to throw his left jab. It's important to continue jab, jab, and double jab. And keep the distance. Keep the distance. Good. And there wasn't a lot between the two of them in that round. And an even round doesn't help O'Neal Bell. And I can't score it any other way but even. No, but, uh, okay, this uh, penalty point now, uh, but Mohamed still uh, leading Let's his four points ahead. this guy. Box him. Box him. Stick. He will run. Uh, yeah, but yeah, you catch him running. Yeah. Yeah. See Get a pain on this guy's face. You got to bang, bang, bang. You got to hit him with that jab, jab, jab. Jab and right hand. Jab and right hand. Jab and right hand. Okay. All right. Okay. All right now. All right now. First fight, I didn't see the look that you know, he was too Phil has. Yeah. He looked much better than the first fight. The bell is sounded for the 10th round. Remember, this is a world championship fight for the WBC and WBA Cruiserweight title. Mormek officially is out in front after eight rounds, after nine rounds. I thought that last round, I scored it even, but the judges most likely won't. So if any judges gave that to Mormek, O'Neal Bell needs to knock him down and knock him out to win this fight. With three rounds to go now, we're in the 10th. And Mormek is a house of fire right now. Cut Bell with a good shot. And it ignites the crowd here. He and the police this sports of Marcel Sudan. Sorry. Oh, it's all right. Come on, sometimes Bell doesn't look normal. His attitude, you know. He, he doesn't seem totally concentrated and, and ready. He tries to be the best he can, but he is he's not in the biggest shape tonight. And I think only a KO can save him tonight. 
to win and to keep his title. What you're talking about is really kind of hot-dogging it a little bit, almost showing off, almost taunting more mega different times, and that's not going to get the job done. you got to do it with punches like you did in the 10th round of the first fight, and here he is trying to load up shots, and hopefully, in his case, for the first minute of this round, that he got Mormek to expend a lot of energy. But Mormek comes right back with a stiff jab. Bell tries to land. He wants to land the right hand. Two and Mormek is making the mistake. He's turning yes. his head to the to his right, exposing his left side. That's wide open for the right hand of Bell. Can he catch him, though? Now, two on the defense. You know, he should handle him, you know? He should handle him. Take his time. You leave the fight. And then we know how strong how the punch of Ben is very, very dangerous. You know, he can't punch on one shot. Right now, if I were Giacchetti, I'd be telling him, don't fight inside. Just jab and stay off him now. You got move, to fight one. And move. And move. Time and move. Very good, Jean-Philippe. That's exactly what he should do. He's waiting. Of course, it's easy to say that and easy to talk about that. But there's a fatigue factor here for both guys. And Bell comes in, but Mormek punishes him with shots and then walks away. And Bell now is walking after him, trying to catch up with a powerful right hand. But the combinations are being landed by Mormek. Mormek obviously exhausted. And here comes Bell trying to get another shot. I'm worried, Colin. I'm worried. With Jean -Marc. Yes, that's better now. But you know, we are round 10, 30 seconds to go. And look at Mormek, you know? Yeah, he's, he's, he's very, very heavy in the thighs right now and very loose in the knees. Okay. Bell blasts him to the right side of the rib cage. And his mouth is open. His mouth is open. Oh, he's very he fatigued. To he needs to breathe. But no matter what kind of condition, with the pace of this fight, you'd be fatigued. And remember, folks, it's tremendously hot inside this arena. They don't have air conditioning here like they do in the arenas in Las Vegas. In spite of the fact it's cooler outside than it would be here. They have it. Closing seconds. All right, here we go in the 11th round. The Colonel Bob Sheridan here with Jean-Philippe Lustique. You're watching King Vision worldwide, and this is a terrific WBC WBA Cruiserweight Championship. Officially after eight rounds, Mormek was winning on the judges' scorecard by four points. I thought that Mormek won the 10th round and the 9th round too close to call, but if that's the case, Mormek is out in front by a minimum of four rounds with these last two rounds to go. Meaning Bell needs to knock him down at least in the 11th round and the 12th round and probably knock him out to win. If he knocks him down, he'll probably knock him out. But Richie Giacchetti has said to Jean-Marc Mormek in the black trunk, stay away from this guy, box him. The problem is that's not the nature of a fighter. No, he doesn't know how a box like this, you know. Jean-Marc has only a plan A, and don't forget, Mormek won 24 victory by no cap in 26 fights. Until the end, with his right and his combination, it will be dangerous. And Bell I'm is... afraid. You know, Colonel, I'm afraid for Jean-Marc. Yeah, well, Bell seems to have a second win right now, too, here in the 11th round. He's trying to nail him with that right hand. But every time Bell comes in, Mark really comes off the ropes firing shots. But he's really fatigued right now. Is he totally exhausted? Did he finish out? There's a lot of time left in this 11th round. Is he totally fatigued or is he playing a little possum? Uh, he looks like he's exhausted to me, falling to his right. And O'Neill Bell wants to jump on him. Mormack, I'm convinced, really is not playing possum. You can tell, I mean, he caught his right shoulder. He's so exhausted he couldn't really walk straight down the ropes. Here comes O'Neill Bell. Can he finish him off? Bell trying to catch him with a big right hand. Mormack is showing me courage, desire, the determination that all the great champs have. But he is flat out exhausted. Exhausted, yeah. exhausted. exhausted. And Clean shots being landed now by O'Neill Bell. And all Mormack has to do is stay on his feet, stay away from him. But does he have the strength to do it? His legs are shot. And the kid just continues to try to hang in there. Bell trying to land a crushing blow. Shifts his position to get a better angle. Comes with the uppercut. Mormack being smart. Only 35 seconds to go in the 11th round, and all he has to do is survive it. And then go three more minutes, and he probably has his fight won. But he's totally out of his feet right now. And O'Neill Bell knows it. This is Mormack showing the road work that Giacchetti made him do now. This is when the miles on the road pay off. These are championship rounds now. And he's hanging in there, and that's all he has to do. That's the reason why he is the unified champion, you know?
Bell trying to catch him, catches him with an uppercut. Looping right hand, closing seconds, there's the bell. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Richie is uh, fooling around with the glove of Mohamed. That's the training of Richie yeah. Giacchetti. <laughs> He has such a great experience. He grabbed, he grabbed an extra sure. 10 seconds. Meanwhile, 10 seconds. The bell still yeah. starts, and the clock says they wasted 15 seconds. Exactly. That's the brilliance of Richie Giacchetti. He, so bought, he yeah. bought 15 seconds for Jean-Marc Mormet. He needs that. Now, the final one. Here we go, the 12th and final round. The world title on the line. O'Neal Bell needs a knockout to win. Mormet needs to just hang on, and he's going to get the decision. Comes with the uppercut. He's able to muster it up. That's a condition he didn't have. And O'Neal Bell continues to hot dog it when he goes after him. Instead of concentrating and taking this guy out. He needs to land the big right hand and really catch him. Mormag yeah. needs to slide down Keep the road. Up. He's on the excellent. Look at this. He's keeping the hands up. As Jean-Philippe said, and look at this, trying to mount an offense. Richie told him, when you get on the inside, throw the uppercuts. This is unbelievable. Two minutes and Jean-Marc with cross finger will regain his title. He deserves to win after his performance during the 11th round. He was great in the first part of the fight, even if the end is difficult. Very difficult. All right, Bell continues to come on here now. You see the time remaining, 153, 152, 150. And Momek fighting a brilliant fight. He's staying away. O'Neal Bell, no sense of urgency, but there should be. Is Jean-Marc mounting an offense. The crowd is on its feet here in the Palina Sports Marcel Ferdinand. They can smell it. Jean-Marc Mormek, if he can weather another minute and a half, is going to win this title back. He slides away, and he's still able to mount up an offense. Bell now has the sense of urgency. He's exhausted. You hear the chance for more mech. This has been some grueling war in unbelievable heat. But he's not finished, you know. He's not finished. One minute to go. Again. And Jama should keep his hands up. Still focused. We never know who's a punch on his bell. He's been exhausted for three rounds. Bell is still dangerous and will be to the end. But the only way Bell can win is to knock him out. And he's only got 50 seconds left. Mormek needs to grab him or stay away. When he's on the inside, he must throw because the covering up leaves his body exposed and he can't take another headshot. 38 seconds to go and Mormek is going to win this yes. title back. The WBC and WBA version. O'Neal Bell still trying to be urgent, trying to go after him. He's almost out of time. It appears Jean-Marc Mormek is going to do it. 40 seconds to go. The bell it's finished. is it's all finished. It ends. It's all over. We're going to have a decision in Jean-Marc Mormek. I don't know whether it was a quick bell or not, but remember, there were 15 seconds at the very start of that round that might have thrown the clocks off. The scoreboard clock in the arena was official and showed 15 seconds, but the bell sounded, and it's all academic now because it's all over, and according to the official judges' score sheets, after the eighth round, and what went on in 9, 10, 11, and even if Bell won the 11th and 12th round, which he did in my score sheet, I get a 113 to 117. Mormack winning the fight 117, 113. In my opinion, three points in favor of Mormack, 117 to 114. And that would be in line with what the judges yeah. had if they saw it the same way we saw the last couple of rounds, of the last four rounds of the fight. There's no question, and that's kind of the thing that takes the, the real climax away now, the anticipation. But everybody knows that Mormack has won this fight. Sure. We still have to make it official, so I want you and the French announcer, uh, Alexander Dubois, announce it. Tell us. No, not yet. No, just say please, big applause for both boxers. But uh, the judges are one from Sweden, huh? uh, one from Sweden, one from Italy, the other one from America. No scorecards. Yes. Hubert Men from Hawaii, Guido Cavallari from Italy, and Michael Hook from Sweden. They're the official judges. We know their score after eight was four points in favor of Mormek. And we also know that Bell won the last two rounds of the fight. 
what happened in the scoring in the ninth and tenth to make a difference. But I'm convinced that Mormek has won this fight. I Remember, I if, the judges, logically, yes. if the judges gave that uh, uh, ninth and tenth round to Bell, you got to draw. But I don't see any way they no. could. The ninth round was very close, but Mormek, in my opinion, definitely won the tenth. So they could be that close as well. Yes, probably closer than we can uh, imagine, one or two points. But logically, Jean-Marc Mormet won tonight and should regain his title. We never know. We're going to take our time, but it's going to be something big for the French boxing. Based on the way Mormet fought, I think in a close round, that 10th round, or the uh, ninth round that I scored it even, the judges will not score an even round. I know Hubert Min well, and in that case, I'd probably give the edge to Mormek. So Mormek is going to win this. Of course, what we're saying now is academic. We'll know officially momentarily. But I get the... Uh, here we go. Here we go. Hi. The moment we are waiting for. Yes. Merci de dégager un petit peu le ring pour faire place yes. au boxeur. Please, would you move on the ring? Too many people, please. The ring announcer say to everyone. This is Jean-Philippe Lustig interpreting what le Alexander résultat. Dubois is saying. The results are... De ce grand combat de ce soir. Décision unanime. Unanimous decision. Unanimous decision. Cavalieri. 115. 115 pour Mormec. 115, 113 to Mormec. He won. Yeah, yeah, he won. Pour yeah. Le juge, Monsieur Hook. 112, 116. 116 to 112, but the ring announcer made a mistake. You know, he said you're not in the decision before. For Pour sure, Mormek is the new Monsieur unified Mille. champion. 113, 115, and 115 to 113. So yes, it's official. Jean-Marc Mormek is the brand new WBC and WBA champion. The judges, 115, 113, 114, 112. 115, 113, and throw our 117, 113 in there. I added a little bit more in favor of Mormet, but the judges all get it right. So on that, uh, one of those last four rounds, they gave it to uh, a third round to O'Neill Bell. O'Neill Bell won the 11th and 12th. But the important thing for everybody here is Jean-Marc Mormet is the brand new WBC and WBA Cruiserweight Champion of the World. So, some final comments now from my partner here, Jean-Philippe Lustig. A wonderful fight we saw. Yeah, absolutely. It, it was fantastic. It was a great, great boxing evening. And can you hear now the, the flavor, the, the, how do the people now, he's happy tonight. It's very important, you know. But in France, today, we have only one world champion before Mormek. It was Suleiman Mbai, the WBA Super Lightweight Champion. Tonight, we see the champion number two, and he unified the title now. Mormek is back. He's 35 years old. He's going to turn 35 in June. He's still at the top, and I'm sure he's able to do more. He's able to do more because he, he's end of his fight. All the times are not pretty good. He's able to improve his stamina to finish as well he's able to start a fight. Well, I just can't give enough credit. Of course, you always have to credit the fighter because he eventually had to do it. I want to thank you for joining us, Jean-Philippe Lustig. It was great having you with us. So, a terrific night. Mormek lifts the WBC and WBA Cruiserweight Championship from O'Neill Bell. For Jean-Philippe Lustig and the entire staff at King Vision, for Frank Belmont and everybody at Belmonte Productions, I'm the Colonel Bob Sheridan saying thanks for being with us worldwide. We'll see you next time. So long from Paris, France. Good night, everybody.